Um, hello everyone, uh, my name is Donna, my pronouns are he, him, and today with the open hearth, uh, we're trying something a little bit new. Uh, this is what I'm calling uh, AV Club. So we are going to discuss, um, in this case, a film and a, a TV show. Uh, the working question is Snowpiercer. Um, and after we discuss it and, and talk about what we like, we're going to uh, move into setting up a game. Uh, the game we're going to be playing this uh, with is uh, Puckless World, uh, the Burned Over Edition, ironically, uh, more like the Frozen Over Edition. Um, um, and we're going to be playing in a, well, counting today, five session run of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess. Um, a brief intro to the series, if you're unfamiliar, spoilers uh, abound. Um, I'll put a chapter <laughs> tag in the uh, in the video so you can maybe skip all of this if you don't want to be spoiled, but you'll probably be spoiled if you watch the game anyway. Um, uh, yes, yes, it is. Um, uh, where was I? Oh, yes. So Snowpiercer is um, about um, a terrible uh, mixture of natural man-made uh, climate disaster. And uh, Mr. Wilford has created this uh, enormous train, which is circling uh, the world. And on it are mostly rich people and their uh, servants or workers. Uh, and in the tale, people who have snuck aboard. Um, and uh, variously in the TV show and the movie, uh, there is uh, revolution and upheaval and all of that kind of stuff where you uh, put people in a pressure cooker. Um, so um, so I've, I've seen, I guess, all the series that's been released so far, uh, seasons one to three. Um, I've seen the film a few years ago, most recently, um, I kind of like them both for different reasons. Uh, maybe we'll get into those uh, <laughs> in a little while. Um, but let's go around the table and get quick intros from our participants, uh, well, future players, I guess, and I guess their brief reaction to the, to the show or film. Um, we don't have a character cut keeper order yet, <laughs> but uh, I'll just go clockwise as I uh, see you. Uh, so maybe, uh, sorry, I'll tell you what the order is so you can kind of uh, manage your expectations. Uh, I got Pavel, Sabine, Brandon, and Mark. Uh, so Pavel, do you want to go first? Uh, hi, I'm Pavel. I use he, him pronoun. Uh, I watched uh, two and a half season of the of the TV, of the TV series, and I and I was really hooked in on the on the first season, and I really thought about what was so fascinating for me in it and i think this was the uh, this uh, the, the the main uh, the main character uh, whose name i of course forgot to google up uh, so just give me a second uh, melanie cavill who uh, of course pretends to be mr wilford and i really enjoyed this like play on uh, because the 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 Mr. Wilford is like a huge figure in this uh, in the thing, and I really like the uh, the idea of like cult of personality that she's upholding, and also all the hard decisions she's making to to keep the train going, and we see it from a. Few, and we see her from many angles and we see that she isn't enjoying it but she thinks it's necessary and she tries to keep peace and in the end of, of and in and, and by the end of the first season we know that she was kind of all right that it's better to have an order because otherwise there is a rebellion and this was like so fascinating for me to see uh, that kind of like a struggle for power and uh, and everything and another thing I, I really loved about it is I love the uh, the views. There are not many in the first season, 
we very briefly see the train going somewhere. They, they happen more in the later seasons, but I really love it. Somehow because I love apocalypse and to see the the, the, the train just travel over the mountains through the through the frozen cities, it's like the the I really like the views. Uh, so yeah, so that's my exposure to the snow piercer. Uh, what I find really lacking, and I hope that maybe this will be our little game, I really find that the series could use a few more bottled episodes. Because I find it fascinating that there's only story, 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 story for 10 episodes, which is cool because it's intensive. But I really think that could have that it needs like a few bottled episodes, like a small problem here, some small problem there, without like a big influence on the on the on the big plot. Uh, so uh, that's uh, so yeah, that's my. First hot take on the snow piercer. Uh, thanks, Pavel. We're we're amassing XP for uh, hot versus cold jokes today. Uh, uh, Sabine, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and give us your um, your kind of brief reaction? Hi, my name is Sabine. I use any pronouns. I have to rename myself and also have to. Forget about the pressure to do hot, cold takes or cold put downs or whatever. Anyways, um, I watched the first episode of this series. I was ex excited about it actually, but I didn't much like it. It was like, oh yeah, this is the trope of this apocalypse thing, and this is the, the other trope. And yeah, of course she is the train conductor. And I thought, yeah, I don't much care about these these characters they they're like standards that i've seen too often i think maybe in these dramatic series where everything is so very serious and uh, then i watched the movie again and i loved the movie i did i, I did it but i love the weird parts i love tilda swinton's character who was just so odd and the whole situation was kind of so so incredibly weird, right? All of these people pressed pressured into a train that was like, oh my gosh, yeah. And then this wild, um, I, I don't think Korean maybe girl who had these premonitions. And then the whole thing with the kids that are, yeah, used to kind of run the train. Of course they are. But I, I love the the way this this leaned into the weirder uh, uh, stories, like like yeah. So, and also, I mean, it has a train. Uh, you will mostly get me on things that have a train on it. So, yeah, that, that's my take. I did not watch the series further than the first episode. It, it maybe that it would have grown on me and maybe it was the wrong time that I watched it and maybe I was too tired and didn't, didn't give it too much of it, enough of a chance, but I was like, okay, no, I don't want to see an entire season of this. Okay, uh, thanks, Sabine. Uh, Brandon, how about you? Hi, I'm Brandon. He, um, I've only seen uh, one episode of the series, but I, I started by reading the graphic novel, um, and that made me want to see the movie. Um, and I really liked the movie too, um, in part because, like Pavel, I like uh, post-apocalyptic, you know, scenarios. They, you know, they're so. Uh, have so many possibilities for uh, you know, people being instrumental to dramas, where otherwise, you know, in, in a in a larger, more ordered society, they really they really couldn't be done, or it would have to be extremely contrived. And I think the reason, one reason that I like the Piercer is that I like trains, like Sabine, um, but also that it is it you it is this pressure cooker of class warfare um, and the, the at attempts to to kind of bring order to a completely disordered society that was that didn't didn't grow organically you know that was essentially you know thrown together by in the case of rich refugees and then you know poor ones just you know pouring onto this train and so you, you have this completely volatile unstable mix of people that are all going 
that are either some of them are going to live or they're all going to die together, right? Because of the machinations. And that's uh, why I liked it uh, so much is that there's, it's, it's a coiled spring just, you know, waiting to uh, uh, undo itself in, and it, cause it can't, it can't end well, at least for, you know, for, for many of the people on the train, uh, but you don't know how it's going to end. Uh, especially, you know, given, uh, as Sabine said, you know, some of the, the really strange elements, which you, you know, which are, are you might well expect, given given the, the very unplanned setup of, of much of this. And you get the idea that even from Mr. Wolford's perspective, that the whole, you know, while the, the train as an engineering device might have been planned, the idea of how it would, you know, you would have a society that managed there was completely unthought out um, in some uh, very fundamental ways. So that's why I like it. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, Mark, how about you? Hi, I'm Mark. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I have uh, just seen the film. Uh, I've seen it uh, twice now most recently just about a week or two ago um i think that the thing that struck me the most was the um uh the portrayal of classism and how the rich really controlled every aspect of the lives of the poor people um including things like um making sure that a revolt would took would take place to keep the population under control those kinds of things um the acting uh was was really good for an action film i it was some of the, uh, some actors that i really enjoyed like jamie bell and ewan bremner um and allison pill as the teacher uh those were all awesome to see i don't think i realized when i saw it originally 10 years ago that um that some of those folks were who they were um and uh, there were some other things that were really that I really liked about the film. Each of the kind of action sequences seemed like it was um, put together with a a specific or a different um, kind of visual motif in mind. And I'm assuming that goes back to the graphic novel, um, but that created a lot of variety. Sometimes you just have the silhouettes of the people uh, in combat um, against a a red background uh and then the um near the end of the film when wolford and curtis are talking uh, i love the kind of wonka-esque uh suggestion that wolford makes that he's going to pass on the train to to curtis uh to control going forward um which struck me as uh pretty hilarious based <laughs> considering everything that had happened up until that point uh, but those are my general thoughts. And then if we're going to talk some more about it, we can get into some other specifics. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think, and this is maybe where we distinguish between the film and the series. Um, you know, it, it, maybe it's a, <laughs> maybe it's a, just a factor of the, the medium, you know, of stretching things out, you know, the, in the, in the series that got a kind of class warfare thing is there, but is not quite as intense as it is in the film. You know, it's, you know, dial to 11 in the film, uh, whereas it's more of a, um, I wouldn't say background character, but it's it's definitely less in your face. You know, there there's still revolution from the tale. There's still, you know, the first class people being obnoxious and entitled. Uh, but, you know, there is a, a more of a mix uh, between the two um, in the series. Um, and maybe that's a little bit of, you know, uh, I don't know, um, studio <laughs> meddling, or maybe that's just, this is what we have to do to make this last longer than a, a motion picture. Um, uh, so I, I, I mean, I think that's like the the one thing that really stands out to me um, across the board is that kind of class warfare, and like you said, Mark, that um, that kind of final 
sub is it subversive act of saying like you have fought your way to the engine and therefore you're taking control and you know i don't know like the the prophecy maybe is it a prophecy the kind of prediction rather that you know you're going to make exactly the same kind of decisions as i do uh, because that's what's necessary for the survival of the human race right um uh and this i think is maybe um you know, much we see this much earlier in the in the TV show as well. You know, where we see Melanie Cavill kind of pretending to be Mr. Wilford and doing this whole calculus of whatever gets the train around the Earth another another time. You know, um, um, yeah. Um, so maybe. So there's, a, I guess, a few more elements. Maybe, maybe though, we can get some thoughts on people about that kind of class warfare um, subject initially, um, and see like what we what we find interesting about it in terms of um, the the film show, but also like the game. You know what we what we might like to see in those terms. Um, can we go back around the table or does someone have a like a, a strong pick me <laughs> I want to speak now uh, urge? Uh, I will uh, start the clock and then we'll see where we'll go. Uh, I really liked the idea of going out from the train. Uh, I think we can like do it maybe e I'm not sure if we need to like stop and go out to trade to some communities however that would be somehow interesting especially if you want to do this if you want to do this apocalypse world vibe of like jumping not like seven years but some further into the future but in general going out to do the the repairs maybe we have to go out to clean the trucks and having to face the the environment I know that Apocalypse World Engine is like best best played on like inter inter character drama, but I would love to see, and I really liked it in the in in the the, the TV series moments when the cold gets into the to the to the train or someone needs to go out and do something into the cold. Uh, guess that would like really show us the snow rather than just being snow on on the outside never appearing in our game. And about the class warfare, of course, I I loved it. Uh, I'm browsing now Amazon to maybe buy the DVD of the movie because I found it on Amazon. So, 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 so we'll see. Because you're right, in the, in the TV series, it was present, but not maybe not so much as in the movie from what you were saying. But uh, but yeah, I really liked it. The first class against the second class and then the tail against everyone else. Uh, so yeah. Was there something else you, you wanted me to talk about? um no no but i think uh um we i mean we can i guess now that you've like introduced this whole element of the outside world you know uh sabine i'm not sure you can you can probably talk about those two things and maybe add a new element to yourself uh yeah i was going on about the thing is i don't know about the series i haven't seen much of it but in the film it glossed over a lot of the day-to-day -day life, right? Where, I mean, yeah, when you were, the food was coming from, and where were these insects from exactly? Was there an insect farm? And I would like to uh, understand more about the dynamic that made the train, makes the train run. And you can't hide class, classism into it because I when, I, when I watched the series, I was like, why aren't they using these people as I don't know labor force or something in the tale? Why are do they get to sit around and do nothing? I'm sure that this train has to have some sort of maintenance crew, right? Somebody has to scrub the toilets for crying out loud. Uh, and and I, I would like I, I mean I find that might be interesting. Also, after 70 years, you might have little enclaves of people who do the same job or do the same, have centered around a certain area of the train um, so that we, we're not, we don't let totally rely on, oh, and now we have to go outside and find some other people because I, I like the idea that it would be really weird to have other people because I mean, the snow piercer is the only thing that kept humanity running except for the ice bear. 
it's a polar bear polar bear yeah, story. Yeah, I think it's right. a polar bear. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I think um, I think the um, what what the what the tailies do like to get jobs and works and and so on is actually brought in in the second episode I think, but it's also like a a tool of that class warfare you know so you people in tail feel like they have to be exceptional and toe the line in order to get out so it's yeah it's very much a uh, um another element of keeping the tail in line right it's a it's a carrot to go with the stick um so but yeah it's a the kind of day-to-day -day of how things work um uh is is pretty interesting um is is Taylor a reference that they use in the series do they call them that yeah yes. yeah okay. yeah because um, that's a throwback to to lost also which had Oh, okay. The people in the tail section, as opposed to the that were introduced at one point. But I, I never, uh, I never uh, even started Lost. You know. Did you really manage to avoid it? You've managed to avoid it this whole time. As a as a a big so at the time I recall this is a tangent that I will try to keep short. <laughs> I was a big <laughs> Alias fan, and. Wow. Uh, by the time Lost came out, I think we were like halfway through season four of Alias, and by that time, I was I had zero confidence <laughs> that Abrams could deliver on a a long term conspiracy theory. You show. could have told us, you could have warned <laughs> us all based on that, Donna. And how many millions of people plotted yeah, along well, with Lost for seven years or whatever it was? Uh, not me, not me. <sighs> You know. I got lost. They lost me the third season, but the first, yeah. <laughs> but the first one was really strong, and I will celebrate that yeah. because because you can't forget the rest. But the one where they had the Hurley episode on the first season with these numbers, yeah, that was that was just peak peak storytelling. They Even a... if it never came to anything, it doesn't matter. That was just like whoa, that was creepy and interesting. They had yeah. a polar bear too. Right. Yeah. There's ice a connection bear. here. There's a connection. Ice, ice bear, yes. <laughs> we're, they we're calling them ice bears now. They should. Yeah, I, we're calling I'm telling you, it's much like, better. They are, because what if they move out of the poles? Then, then yeah, they'll, they'll still be polar. ice bears, but they won't be polar. Um, in, the, in the world of Snowpiercer, what do the poles matter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole world is a pole. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, um, from oh, a I, climate I mean, perspective. I really love the idea that it was these chuckleheads. I mean, the, the, the that are talking about darkening the atmosphere because that's an actual thing people are talking about. And all oh, of these yeah. people are talking about it should watch this movie mm -hmm. like a lot all the time. Um, so, yes, that's the first of many tangents disposed of. <laughs> but we shall return to the ice bears. Uh, uh, Brandon, how about you? Any, any comments on? all of these elements we have going uh um let's see uh with regards to classism i think uh um I, I think that's one of the things that makes this powerful but i agree with sabine that's like if you're playing years down the line then probably the 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 sort of virulent us or them classism has had to have morphed uh to produce uh a, a more typical stratified society right where you have people with with more privileges than others but you've got an underclass that does the crap jobs you know and that are you know and and you know what their mechanism whether they're stuck there forever or if they have a possible mechanism of climbing up the class ladder you know is you can do any of several ways but of course, anyone who's at a certain point, anybody who exists in the society has to be able to to feed for themselves, map for themselves, right? Nobody's giving them the means to exist anymore. Um, at the beginning, you know, in the Snowpiercer movie, you know, everything was so raw and new, and there was a possibility of cutting the tailies, you know, completely loose and leaving them to die. And so it was in flux. But once it settled down, then... Uh, you have that and you may have enclaves or you know or guilds or people it's like you know we're you know who have grouped together it's like oh, we're the ones who know how to maintain you know the plumbing you know that sort of thing and so that gives us a little more 
you know, bargaining power than our otherwise, you know, low status might do, you know, versus, you know, or high status skills, like the people who work the hydroponics, you know, to grow the, grow the food, you know, uh, and so, so both, you know, your class, you know, class doesn't have to be an orderly, you know, procession from, you know, royalty to the peasantry, right? It's often, uh, often has, you know, pockets of, of, of different uh, people who are, a kind of vying to maintain their own power or or augment their own power, um, whether they and and some and I think that the, the difference and disproportion of power between groups is fundamentally interesting um, and a topic that is not explored in enough games, and so I really like it. Um, you know, just like I like religious differences, which is a thing that's seldom explored in games, even though it is a huge part of human history. But um, but here we have classism, and and we should totally go with it. You know, at the very least, I think that 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 people who were you know of the lower classes should have kind of a you know, that there should be other people who think of them as kind of being tainted. You know, having sort of peasant blood kind of thing. Uh, you know. And, and being fundamentally, you know, unsuitable or stupid or, or you know, prone to violence or what have you, because that's the way people are, and, um, and I, I think that makes a much more fun uh, uh, role playing backdrop. As far as the train stopping, I kind of don't want to encounter people outside the train because I think that, um, I think that one of the the joys of Snowpiercer is that these people on the train have been are, have been forced to make a society with what they've got. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it's like, okay, you know, it would be, you know, it'd be great if, you know, we had a better distribution of, you know, skills and abilities and such like that. But that's, you know, they, had, they started with a very sort of random gaggle of people and it shows. Um, you know, that that there are some abilities or predilections or skills or what have you that are rarer um, than others. I don't cut in here yeah. real quick when you say that they were thrown together by chance. I don't think they were. I think Wilford made very sure that he would have the engineers and people with the relevant skills on the train to keep it running because here. he planned the whole thing. And then you have the tailies who have a various... Yes, yes, I'm sorry. You're, 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 it's a very, that's a very good point. Uh, and and I, I overstated it. Um, there, there are some things that were kind of clearly planned for, and then there are other things that, were, that, from my looking at the movie, were clearly not planned for. Like, you know, the things that keep an orderly society running, other than security. Yeah, um, super creepy teacher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's just, it's just, I mean, Wilford clearly had some, you know, he planned everything, but he had some very, very strange ideas as to what would make a stable society. And so I think those edges, you know, having those things, you know, persist and having those edges showing is really interesting. It's like, okay, well, people do this because this is the way we've always done it. Not necessarily because it makes any sense, you know, because, and because that society's like that too. Um, and, uh, you know the idea of maybe that the train has to stop sometimes in order to main to do some maintenance or to scavenge for 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 raw materials that are not naturally easy to recycle or or something um sure i, I think that would be fine but i i kind of don't want there to be groups of people outside that are alive because that takes away from the idea that snow piercer is is the repository as far as we know it of human life um uh, which i think is is very powerful so that's that's what i've got uh yeah thanks thanks Brandon. uh mark back around to you everybody said all the good stuff so i guess uh <laughs> um i i uh i think that um so classism obviously is going to be there in one in one realm or another. But what was the original question that you were asking about? I think that might have been the original question. <laughs> was we, was yeah, which was like, you know, how 
I guess how intact is the maybe the class warfare class system, system yeah. that we have in place? You know, in in our inspiration, you know, is is it echoes? Are there is it kind of become a multi multipolar world? Um, in terms of the kind of centers of power, and you know, um, yeah. Thank you. So with on, on board the train, I think that you could expand a lot on the um, you could expand a lot on the way that's presented in the film uh, as having just the rich people and just the poor people to have a have a wide variety of enclaves on the train. If it's a thousand uh, cars long or however we decide to make how long we decide to make our train. Um, but it, it could certainly become much more complex, I guess, than we have in Snowpiercer. Um, I think you still want to have the, um, <laughs> I still think you want to be able to punch up. So I, I think we still want um, this kind of train royalty or whatever we want to call them in charge and everyone else um, under them, essentially. And uh, again, this is another way for um, this. It's just always the real world comparisons, but this is another way for the rich people to uh, keep the rest of the train down by letting the different enclaves fight amongst themselves for whatever resources they have available. Um, yeah, so that that's my take on it. And I must say, when they discover that the the protein bars have been made from insects, that seems like they were way more shocked than I would expect them to to be, because I mean, what else? You know, I mean, what else are you eating on board? I I wouldn't be that surprised if we're eating more insects in ten years than we do now in our uh, society. It's especially weird if you consider that at the end, that what what uh, Curtis said at the end, how they were eating at the start of the whole thing. Oh like, yeah, right. I mean, I, insects are so much better than yes, <laughs> right. I yeah. mean, come on. That's a huge I think it was step that. Up. I think it was that they were instead of being like worms, they were like you know creepy crawlies. You know, they're yeah, yeah. Still cockro 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 cutting cockroaches. off your own limbs and eating oh, them. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. No. No, no, no question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it was designed more to squick the audience than the the people on the train. I mean, I think like there's there's an interesting thing which they do in the series, which you know we see them. I think in episode one we see them eat these those kind of black slabs of food, mm -hmm. um, but when we see you know um, people from the tail move up uh you know and get other food food they remember from seven or eight years ago like sure. you know, if it's soup and bread and it's like they they're treating it like a feast and then there's like another moment later on where he goes into hydroponics and he gets a strawberry and it's you know like um and there's two things going on here it's like you know it's obviously a luxury, but it's something that people in the rest of the train have. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also like this talk about balance, you know, and how much energy you can afford to put into luxuries versus um, versus versus other things. Um, but there's still this out of whack uh, uh, kind of mindset. Like they have a cattle car. Right. And, you know, if you know anything about agriculture, you know how much water and grain and everything cattle take versus every other kind of livestock or, or food stuff. And it's just like, oh, well, we have to first class expects their roast beef on Sundays or whatever it is, you know, and it's just completely uh, entitled, you know, <laughs> more than the strawberry. Right. <laughs> Uh, um, so yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that obviously it's a box world. So, you know, talking about scarcity is like a real cornerstone of the game, but I wonder if there's room for the, the kind of old things that people in first class got used to and like the memory of luxuries and how things used to be scarce. I don't know. Uh, it might be an interesting space to, to play for.
Um, I guess my 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 kind of question before we take a break would be like, what are the so if I'm talking about scarcity as like a question to help for the world, like are there other questions that you think we really ought to be answering or asking at least? Um, Mark, seeing as everyone stole your good answers last time, yeah. Start with you. <laughs> well, I was just thinking uh, the blood. Um, God, what's it? Is it called the Bloodhound? I think the the playbook. Um, if anybody decides to play that, it is um, one of the things that is the foundation for it is not really understanding the apocalypse, what happened. So maybe keeping that a mystery um, for some in some way um, would would be interesting. Um, and I'm sorry, I started for my answer while you're still um, asking the question. So the question was, what are some other things that we wanted to uh, ask or answer? Right. Okay. Right. Um, um, I, hmm. uh, another one of the things that, that goes along with Apocalypse World is um, having weapons or, or like uh, to my knowledge anyway, because I've really not ever played Apocalypse World. So um is so um having having no bullets so uh, which they run into in the film or kind of um might be an interesting thing to ask is there are there any um uh that are available um is anybody hoarding them somewhere does anyone have any secret stashes those kinds of things uh i'll think of something else at some point here but i'll let you move on to whoever's next yeah i mean i guess the because the two things which are never scarce in a game of apocalypse world are gas petrol to my mind <laughs> and bullets right um so certainly there are playbooks that have firearms as weapons but maybe maybe in this world that is a lot rarer than it would be in a normal game of apocalypse world but yeah well the gunlugger no longer exists in this version of Apocalypse World, but you know what I mean. Um, uh, Apoc Apocalypse World owes a good bit to Mad Max, honestly, <laughs> in that yeah, regard. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so maybe, yeah, do that. maybe that's a a, um, uh, a particular scarcity we want to we want to dial up or at least discover uh, what's going on. Yeah. Uh, cool, uh, Brandon. Any any questions? Uh, you think we ought to be asking? Um, no, I I do like to amplify on those. Um, that uh, uh, yeah, how is this different from regular apocalypse world? Um, uh, and the you know having things like bullets and f and fuel be scarce makes perfect sense, right? Because they're aren't any vehicles um and uh you know and presumably the only people who had you know had have weaponry was security and you know maybe they that they didn't necessarily have reams of ammunition right it wasn't expected that they would be fighting a war um uh so you know uh, and and <laughs> a concomitant with that once we get into the gameplay is you know what what playbooks uh, either don't make sense or need to be sort of heavily modified um, in order to uh, to fit uh, Snowpiercer. Uh, okay, um, Sabine, how about you? Any any questions you think we ought to be posing? I think we need to wonder about what 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 do we do with the psychic maelstrom because that is a large part of the apocalypse world and a lot of playbooks tie into the uh, the maelstrom and we have this weird character at least in the in the movie who can has possibly psychic powers so how do we want to want to uh, Iona, exactly uh do we do we want that do we say, say okay this is this is known now that whatever happened some people have weirder abilities than they used to have when the sun was still shining or maybe it's shining again who knows um yeah also i wonder how 
how often you would go outside to train to do maintenance. As I think Brandon was it who said you'd, you'd have to ride uh, because after 70 years, you'd have to do some maintenance on the train and maybe even have to try and do maintenance on the, on the track itself. Um, that would be kind of interesting. I... This is a tangent, but it is kind of relevant. There is a book called Iron Council by Chana Mabel that is also about a train. <laughs> and uh, the people in that book, they, they have the train, but they only have a very limited supply of railways. So they drive the train and they stop, uh, take on um, and, and rebuild, kind of take up the rails that they have passed and then put them on the front of the train and then go on. So. I don't know. I, I think we wouldn't want to do that here because it's a bit too far off the beaten path. But you know, it, it, it would really really avoid railroading, and I see myself out. <laughs> uh, the ultimate railroad uh, uh, campaign. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Pavel, <laughs> how about you? Uh... I think tying to the first thing I said, I love, I would really like to ask questions. What question, like, what are we willing to sacrifice? What are we willing to sacrifice to keep going? Uh, and I know that this can be a bit, be pretty gruesome, but, uh, but you know, are we willing to, to sacrifice cutting off few cars to keep going? Is it too much? Like which cars? Of, of course, everyone will have a different opinion, but, uh, yeah, this kind of like a tough decisions that uh, because otherwise you, you you stop you die. So what are you willing to sacrifice to keep going? Uh, I'm not sure if it. Yeah. I'm not sure if it if it's not too big because I'm not sure how I will settle the train ruler. Will we divide that among several law keepers or have or have one one law keeper, Mister Wilford? We will see. So it might be too big of a question, but I'm really curious to see. Okay. Just one more thing to consider uh, if there's any value in having it that's a plot point in the film anyway, but I don't know if it exists elsewhere, is the is the drug, Kronal, that um, is uh, that some characters are addicted to, but also has explosive properties uh does that exist in the series do they just yeah, kind of brush yeah, aside it yeah but it's um it's been a we a while since i've seen it never uh, goes anywhere it's yeah not, okay. it's, it's mentioned that they are making it and then it's cut and then someone steals some supplies to make more of it and then it never goes anywhere okay yeah i, I mean i don't know if we need that but i guess if we need a drug in the course of the game we can fall back on it Okay. Great. Um, so maybe let's take a break. Okay. So we are back after another tangent. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think we're about ready to start picking playbooks. Um, so usually, uh, you know, whenever I sit down with a with a group for this, I I hope that people have maybe two or three that are jumping out at them. Um, or maybe they have one that they're fixated on. I don't, I, I don't mind. Um, but maybe let's go around the table and see um, who's eyeing up what. And then maybe maybe there's no overlaps and we've got a very simple um, prospect. Um, is there anyone who wants to go last? and have their choices curtailed by everyone else's. No? Um, well, let's be uh, bidding for medic <laughs> already. <laughs> um, so Mark, why don't you tell us what you're interested in and maybe what about them you find interesting? Uh, so I actually I didn't put this down, but Bloodhound, uh, I think, is interesting, um, a character who is trying to get to the heart of the matter and is um, 
Uh, interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Um, I'm just seeing the results that people are, or the, 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 the ideas the, that people have. Yeah. The bloodhound is, is totally interesting. The question is whether it needs a long, I, I, I the question I have, which I don't know the answer to, but whether it needs a lot of sessions to, to really um, develop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the only concern I had about that. Yeah. Uh, and then I was also looking at the gear cutter and the medic. And I think that uh, Sabine is um, looking number one at the medic. Yeah, maybe. And Pavel is looking number one at the gear cutter. I'm, I'm totally happy to play the Undaunted. I've played medics before. Um, I'm not in this game. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm good with um, uh, with any of I mean, they're, they're all cool. I'm in one way or another. I'm equally split between the Monarch and the Gear Cutter because the Gear Cutter is, is more about the engineer and fixing stuff. And Monarch is about this people management. So I'm like equally split. I was hoping that someone <laughs> will, will grab one or the other so that then I so that so, so then I, I, I don't have to do the side. I mean, we can cascade. I can do the Medic and mark the Gear Cutter and you have to do the med Monarch. But it, <laughs> I feel the balls are all up in the air still, right? Brandon, I don't know. What about you? Yeah, Brandon, you're looking at Brain Picker and Undaunted. Um, the uh, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I guess I tilt slightly towards Brain Picker, especially if uh, you know Sabine wants to play Undaunted. I'm just saying that the Undaunted is a cool playbook. Um, and it and it, it adapts well to a lot of different situations. I will um, do the Undaunted then. That 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 seems fine if if that's okay with everybody. But I think it might be. Cool. I'm undaunted. I will leave you up to have the decision. The <laughs> you can go and fight for the gear cutter now, Pavel and Mark. Uh, so we've sold the brain picker and the undaunted yeah. so far. Is that right? Sure. Uh, Pavel, what's your preference? Gear cutter or monarch? Because uh... uh, I'm happy to play the medic now that I've stolen it from Sabine. <laughs> I coerced her. I think I will pick. I think I'm going to go with Monarch then. That we can have more more people in in the setting, and, and we'll see what will go. I mean, med, I mean, Medicus also can have a bunch of people around him. So yeah, you you have some playbooks in the in the in the uh, character keeper drop down that. Um, Aren't in the listing. Are they original? Uh, world so, uh, no, no, they're burned over ones, but I don't recognize oh. them. Oh, they're like they, critter, critter, and Gemini, and be, Ringmaster and Worm. They must be some of the uh, extra ones from the Patreon. Yeah. Got it. Uh, I was just which, I, which I probably have buried somewhere in a, <laughs> in a drive. So. Um, but yeah, yeah some of the some of the playbooks like the the harrier are hard to imagine yeah. in in the uh, in the setting and other ones like the vigilant carry an enormous amount of sort of uh, world baggage with them um so i yeah, stayed away from those yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind baggage, but I guess the Harrier would have to not have bikes, right? <laughs> uh, which is um... well, I mean the the vigilant requires the you know the wolves of the uh, of the apocalypse, right? Yeah, I mean I, I have no problem bringing wolves of the apocalypse to the party. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my favorite uh, uninvited guests. Um, uh, so, um, sorry, Mark, were you saying you were taking the medic or playing I'm really torn. Bloodhound? Uh, I think I'm, I'm actually um, torn between the gear cutter and the medic. Oh, um, okay. And I'm assuming it doesn't really matter in the end. You're fixing something one way or the other, right? Um, let's see, Monarch. I'll be gear cutter because that'll give us somebody who is, um, who can work on the <laughs> um who can work on the uh the train maybe okay. uh 
And Pavel, were you still deciding between medic and monarch, or? I think. Uh, oh, so you were so you're taking gear cutter. I think I will. Hmm. I apologize, Pavel. I thought you had just settled on the monarch. So. Uh. Uh. Yeah. No problem. Uh. I think I think I will stay with monarch. And see what will come up. Of this. You know what? In that case, I will go with medic because okay. I, I read no, I read the undaunted moves and I'm like lukewarm and all of them. <sighs> so I I think I'll I'll go with the with a medic because I mean, can't can't hurt having a medic, right? Perfect. Cool. Okay. Cool. I mean, my people will need a lot of specialist help. So I'm sure your people are lovely people who can pay can pay for uh, <laughs> any kind of help I can give you. I mean, if you need your plumbing fix, or you want some, or, or you want a strawberry. Ooh, I a... uh, yeah, I can do a lot with a strawberry, actually. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, sounds like everyone has landed. Um, so yeah, uh, if you haven't already, pick uh, your spot on the character keeper. Um, this is not my character keeper, so it's a little bit. Uh, it's very busy, but uh, hopefully, uh, if you have the PDF in front of you, it makes a little bit more sense. Um, so, in in typical um, uh, apocalypse world style, you're gonna pick. Uh, you have four stat lines. Uh, these are in rows twenty seven down. Um, uh, so you pick one stat line that gives you the five stats which you will put above um, aggro, cool, hard, sharp, and weird. If you're an Apocalypse World veteran, uh, hot is no longer a stat, uh, it's kind of been subsumed into cool, and I guess aggro and hard has been kind of split into hard which is doing battle and aggro which confronting people um otherwise sharp and weird are kind of left intact and do the same things um then depending on your playbook you'll get a certain number of moves um it might be two or three depending on the playbook um uh, and then the other things to choose are kind of gear. Um, there might be some specific stuff for your playbook. Um, holler if you're not sure what's going on. Uh, and then the last thing we'll do is HX. So that is your relationships uh, with each other. So we'll wait until everyone has finished most of the things before we get to that. Um, uh, your playbooks may reference a hard zone, so I'm not using any of the normal hard zones. I'm kind of creating a mishmash uh, of a, a hard zone for the train, for the Snowpiercer itself. And I have picked over uh, some of the existing locations in those hard zones to be like carriages or a bunch of carriages, and um, I will create some more uh, over the next week uh, for us to start play with. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, so, uh, I, 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 so the question I, I wanted to ask, how do we envision the train as a whole? Do we want a Mr. Wilford somewhere link over the train with, I don't know, soldiers and stuff? Do we want the train divided into like a couple of the factions like how do we envision this because that can influence a lot of our a lot of my choices because i usually get some devotees and i'm like trying to think should i get the guardians because i have some warlords on left and right or or like how do we like envision this high level i mean this was probably going to be for one of my questions for you pavel when we start off right is that who are you dealing with? Are you where the book starts uh, or stops? 
Uh, are there other people you have to deal with? Is there someone above you? Um, so, um, so yeah, I mean, I guess your your choices of people will probably kind of. Uh, I would say you should choose whatever you want to in terms of your okay. people, and then we'll build on that. You know. Okay. Um, uh, and the same goes for everyone. You know, whatever whatever you, choices you make in character generation are going to really impact the uh, the the feel of the train. I will refrain from having an ambulance. It would feel a bit weird. <laughs> or maybe one of these little electric scooters. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, since we can build whatever we like, if you would like to have like, I don't know, an above train car that moves on the on the roof and just like you, so that uh, the medical help can get to whatever place they need quickly rather than walking. Because I did some fun calculations and, and, and the calculations by walking, it's five hours from beginning to the end uh, if, if there's a thousand rail cars. So, if someone's having heart attack, you're not getting there in, in that, time. That assumes that they, that, you know, does that include the amount of excuse me's that you have to do? <laughs> yeah, the... I mean, assuming That's... all the doors open for you, that, that would yes. be my point. Right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then mm. there's nothing in the way that says, no, you can pass through here. Sorry, do you have a ticket? What's your ticket like? Let's show me your ticket. Yeah, so so just mention if you want to have like an ambulance, like an above train car with like a pass only for the medics. I I'm just I just invented this. Is so I like the idea actually, but the, I mean in the in the series there is like a, a like a sub train basement, oh. and they do mm -hmm. have like a not quite mm -hmm. a rail car but a cart yeah. that mm -hmm. can bring you along the train. Mm. Uh, so I was definitely considering having like the tunnels underneath the train be, you know, a uh, a location, you know, with mm. all of the dangers and such uh, that would that would entail. I mean, in, in that case, I would rather take access to unexplored, maybe not underground, to unexplored chambers, and we can leave it at that and flush it out um, in play. Yeah, so that might yeah. also be that I have access to the top of the train. Or some some side railing thing that somebody built. I mean, yeah. you don't know. People start building stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they might even they might even start building things that are like really inadvisable, right? That scavenge mm -hmm. important things in the train that might be needed in emergencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the um, uh, Donna, uh, yeah. what exactly does the augury move do? So <clears throat> augury yeah. is how you discover things uh, in a, um, so it's not opening your brain as such. It is, um, uh, it is like influencing the psychic maelstrom's effect on things. So it's, it's not like augury in the tra traditional sense. Um, it is using, um, your brain as like a psychic antenna. So if you look at the moves tab. <clears throat> I'm, I'm uh, reading the I'm reading the augury move. Oh okay. But 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 I but even reading the move it's not 100 percent clear as to yeah. what it does. So so this I think this will make a lot more sense once we see what the psychic psychic maelstrom is in play. Mm -hmm. Um, and this would be something I would say the first time someone says, I open my brain, mm -hmm. we're going to be asking, what does that look like? What does a psychic maelstrom feel like? What does it want? All of these things, which are 
completely undefined uh, and augury kind of builds on that but it allows you to really say mess with the rules of the psychic maelstrom um to kind of uh pick at it if that's not putting too fine a word on it for the brain picker uh to pick at it like it's a tool just for you right to um uh so yeah it's it's yeah it's a little bit obscure i think written uh but that's because we don't know anything about the psychic maelstrom yet and then the second question that i have is what does the what does psi do uh, so uh, psi is like psi harm so it so it's not physical harm but it like could um but but it's also a stat and what does it mean as a stat so it's a stat for some playbooks essentially right. um so it means if you are um i guess um you know if you're new in the world or if you are kind of um strangely attached to the world then you have this stat which is like how i want to say like how normal you are you know how uh disconnected from the psychic maelstrom you are um so it's yeah it's it's kind of an odd stat <laughs> um uh let me open the pdf and read it for you <clears throat> um yeah so i guess it's your like psychic strength and will uh, some moves use it as an active or a defensive trait um so yeah uh, i'm not sure what how you get it because most people don't start with it well i have a piece of gear that gives plus one sign and uh, oh yeah with, sorry without without other explanation it was really hard to know whether it was good yeah yeah um yeah i think uh most people do start with psi but it's at zero yeah so yeah i think i mean it's probably good right it seems like it's a good thing right to be able to uh <clears throat> attack someone's or influence someone's psychic center right I think it, do I want to go be a normal guy or be a weird or or be some somehow uncomfortable person because I was wondering if it's not too much of a cross of a line to to have one of my groups a cult mm -hmm. a cult that believes in a snow oh and then choose an art and my art would be probably involve People and snow, so the people might be dying in this pre in this process of the art. I was just, I was just thinking, isn't isn't this too much of a I don't know gruesome thing for our game? 
And it won't make you, you a lot of friends, to be sure. So does this mean like your your cult wants to put people outside of the train as a like a sacrifice? Is that what I? Yeah, and I was like trying to think because this is like art and gracious. When you perform your chosen art, I was thinking of like, you know, some making a sculptures of people and the snow. But probably the person is like frozen dead in this in the sculpture. It's like a, a snowman, but there's like a someone inside. I mean, I can make it like a less gruesome by just making things from the snow, I guess. I wouldn't be totally comfortable with you posing dead people in frozen or freezing people to pose them. But, but yeah, that's that's why I'm asking. Cool. Yeah, thank um, thank you, and uh, I I I don't think I'm I'm super okay with that. I'm sorry. Say Donna, um, yep. on the gear cutter, it under other moves is tinkering and it's pre-selected. Uh, so I get two gear cutter moves, and yep. I've chosen those. But do I also get tinkering for free then? Uh, I think so, but let me just double check. Mm -hmm. I think you should because I can choose one thingy and then I would get tinkering yeah, too. Yeah, tinkering, tinkering is yeah. not, not a tinker gear cutter move in the book. Yeah, tinkering is not a gear cutter move. It's just one you get automatically. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. And one more question, Donna. The um, under the scavenge section, um, the A and B are both showing one more barter than is shown on the playbook. I'm assuming it's calculated, but um, the first option is plus. You have two barter. The second option is you have three barter. Um, on the uh, character keeper as opposed to the playbook where it's one and plus one and plus two, but I was assuming again, it was calculated. So I don't know. It's yeah, for me as well. I also okay. get one more in the playbook than I, I also have one more in Excel than I get in the playbook. Hmm. So if you can, can Donna go to this uh, yeah. sheet with all the data. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Um... That'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> digging around the data tables i mean you um, can just like show us this uh because i think this this uh this tab is hidden and we can like find it ourselves and adjust it i'm not sure how to yeah i, I want to take a look at that myself see what's going on uh -huh. sure uh, i will i will have that sorted out by uh by startup play next week a snow cult. That will be fun. But much less terrifying than, than my earlier plot. Just a snow cult. And um, sorry, Donna, one more thing. It looks like it is. So when I do the salvage grounds for the gear cutter, it's asking me to specify. I think it's asking me to specify five hard zones. Um, so I don't know if that's. If yeah, I'm so it's, that yeah, so it's hard zone location. So. Oh, OK. Uh, Got it. So hard zone has eight locations. OK. Um. So if you go to the train and its people, um, 
I have started to fill these in. Excellent. Uh, so there's eight, basically eight carriages or okay, eight great. sets of carriages uh, identified as locations. Uh, so you I'll can, specify that then later. Yeah. So I will have filled all those in by next week. And if you, um, this is a specific location you really want to want to have available. I'll think about it. Okay. Um, uh, will you set up an NPC tab? Because I've got three NPCs who are hanging around my place. <laughs> yeah, I like so, having NPCs hang around my place. Yeah, yeah. smoking cigarettes, you know. <laughs> That's not healthy. They can't smoke cigarettes. So no. Uh -uh. Mm, this is not a cigarette that is hanging out of my mouth. So in that train and its people tab, uh, there's mm -hmm. a space for people on the carriage. Yeah, and that. I'm going to add extra lines of those so we can have more than two per location eventually. <laughs> so if you want to decide uh, where where you live, uh, we can we can put in your your uh, your helpers there. There's no space for character pictures, right? I just, oh, there, there it is. I found it. There is space for character right. pictures. Thank you. It's a small space, but we can make it bigger if we really it's have that. Big enough, I think, for this guy at least. Ooh. There's so many nice pictures, damn it.
Is there an XP tracker on this character sheet somewhere? Sorry, XP tracker? Yes. Yeah, so you see um, <clears throat> there's the system here is a little bit different from the usual. You have spaces to track XP alongside all your stats and your harm and your um, help and interrupt, which is uh, help or interfere, essentially. And when you tick those three different types, you mark an improvement. And when you've except marked it three changed, except it changed. Now you track four experience per stat, and you don't count for moves. This one looks like it's it was used to in the first iteration of the the burned over. I, I learned about it recently because I didn't know about this 2021 edition that you linked with the playbooks and then the, and I downloaded it and now it's slightly different. That's why I was wondering you still so you need six experience. It's on the playbooks. You need six experience. Each stat has like four dots. So each stat can get you like so you have to use a stat four times to get the XP from the stat. So we have to like add a counter I think to the stat. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna use the one in the uh, character keeper. Okay, so we are using the 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 previous version, yes. Okay. Yeah, because I'm <laughs> I'm not recreating a character keeper for this. To okay, so how did the old system work? Okay, I I will I will read between the sessions and I will get from you with the, how the previous system works. Yeah, you got to mark uh, the three different types of XP to get an improvement, and that's. Uh, rolling a stat, uh, rolling history, uh, and taking damage. So if you so if you have three of those, do you just mark one of the improvements, and, and you need like a total of three. Or do you get like and or do you get like a stat bonus? So if, so so if I use aggro cool and hard, do I get like a level up and I can add a plus one cool? Or do I have to no. mark aggro cool and hard to get one improvement and then get two more to get one cool? Um, you have to get mark uh, if you have uh, marked aggro cool and hard. Uh, then you get can mark one improvement, uh, uh, erase the marks that you previously made, and then you mark three others, and you mark another one improvement, erase the ones you had marked, and then after you've marked three more, so you need to actually make nine okay. marks to get an improvement. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That's, at least that's what I remember. Yeah, yeah it's... It it's not quite the same as saying you need nine XP because obviously you can mark the same stat like three times over the course of that, but it's kind of like a a way of mechanizing the singleton rule, which we see in some other games. So you can't like spam a uh, a certain stat. So which is really kind of... good because that was the problem with the first one. Someone gets into a fight, rolls hard ten times, gets two levels. Someone else sits sits behind the doesn't doesn't participate in a fight and misses on two levels. So, yeah, I definitely like it. So, how are we doing? Uh, I think Blizzard is mostly done. I still don't have a very good grab of this character, so it go, so it's gonna be learned. So I'm gonna have to be learning this character as we go. But since I love weird cults, and I had this thought about the snow cult, like how could I do I, do I refuse not to have a, a little snow cult in the snow apocalypse? So are we ready for character introductions or?
Okay. I think I've got it right. Um, so maybe let's do character introductions and then take a quick break. Let it, that, that mull over and then we'll come back to do HX. Uh, so we now have character keeper order. So mark your first. <laughs> Yeah, and thank you to everyone. I saw you filling up those columns on the right. Uh, I am playing uh, Lemma, the gear cutter. Um, Lemma goes by he, him pronouns. Uh, Lemma is um, their first glance or first impression is that they are obsessive. Um, and Lemma is... Um, Ultimately, I think the person that people come to when they do need something fixed on the train, um, I guess maybe it's up in the air about how much work Lemma actually does for the people who run the train. Maybe they really just focus on doing things for the people of the train, um, not necessarily um, the other bit. Uh, and Lemma is um, probably in his late 50s. Um he looks like he spends a lot of time working on things. Uh, he up close. Um, he has a pair of aviator sunglasses that um, are kind of held together by bits of wire and whatever else he's been able to scavenge over the years. Um, but he wears those aviators and um, that's probably like his defining feature. Uh, for the playbook moves, I chose Bone Feel, uh, which uh, at the beginning of the session, roll plus weird, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it's about being in a the right place at the right time with the proper tools and knowledge. Um, and I chose Things Speak, which is kind of a psychometry um, skill, which allows uh, Lama to um, ask some questions about something interesting things that are interesting that uh, are found on board the train whatever they might be is there anything else that we wanted to wanted me to cover here donna um do you have an idea for where lemma hangs out or lives yeah for let's look at the train here um i think that it's maybe the shatters um which is the broken carriage overlooked by bandits and the cult of the iris uh spanned by wait when we say overlooked by bandits and the cult of the iris are we saying that they have bypassed it or are we saying that they watch over it um you know how how long how long is a piece of string I, you know <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I, I imagine we're gonna find out exactly how when first we lay eyes on on that carriage right Okay, so <laughs> absolutely. Okay, excellent. Can I, can I just ask Donald maybe like specify this word bandit is like very undescribing. I would can we like, can we like use like I don't know who are they? They are they like profiteering something like different than bandit because bandit maybe, is like maybe gang. I think gang is, is better because bandits is, you know, overused in all kinds of games to generic bad guy. I would like something more specific. Are they like, I don't know, some people from the tail who got into the middle and are, and, and are now sitting here trying to like profiteer? Something more describable than bandit. I mean, I could go with something like, you know, border agents, you know, <laughs> we can... You know, people who who extract uh, whatever oh. they want out of people who are passing, right? Um, yeah, well, that's it's like a gang with turf, right? Which makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yes, that that's, there would that, be, that's perfect. Because they're, I mean, yeah, because they're not, I mean, they don't view themselves as evil, right? They're just protecting their own people. Um, yeah, but banditry implies, you know, uh, a frontier, you know distance that you don't really have in the train yeah i mean um so so you happy with a kind of a rewriting of bandits as security or a gang or what uh 
Yeah. I, I don't think I, like all, all of these words have their own baggage, you know? Uh, so. Uh, well, gang maybe. is nice because it can be, it can, <laughs> it can be, you know, tail people or it can be like disaffected security personnel, you know, it can, you know, it really be anything. So uh, I think, I, I, I think it, I, I would be fine for now to call them like, I'm thinking not a border guard, but like borders. People probably call them border because they take the toll when you're crossing the border between their tra their, their 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 when you try to enter their zone. So maybe like just calling them like border guard or borders, it's you know at least gives us the the feeling. Oh, those are the guys who like charge you for passing their their turf or like take all of your stuff if if they don't like you and so on. Tax collectors. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Oh, gang. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. Um, so our original question was uh, uh, Lemma lives or hangs out in the shadows, right? That's correct. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Um, any questions other people want to ask at this point? No? Um, um, so, uh, so you are, you're, you're basically uh, like a, a freelance repair person, fixer? Yeah, I think so. Um, but um, especially trying to keep uh, stuff together for um, for the poor folks. So, do you think when 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 it comes to fixing the train, dilemma like charge the people who are living in the wagon that needs fixing in the carriage that is fixing? Do you try and go and and take the the payment from the person who rules this the this this carriage. Yeah, I think that um, I think that Lemma does try to get payment from whoever is kind of responsible for that carriage in whatever way they are responsible. If he can find somebody responsible for each one, he's probably got a ledger um, that he writes in if uh, if folks owe him and. They can't pay. Someone always eventually pays, right? <laughs> they pay one way or another. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mark. Um, Thank you. Brandon, why don't you introduce us to Dusk, the brain picker? Um, I don't think anybody knows where Dusk came from, and she doesn't ever talk about it. Um, she's uh she is kind of, she's small and pretty and um uh has a kind of musical quiet voice uh, and she has eyes that look right through you uh so she provokes a wide variety of different reactions in people um she um uh, she's sometimes just seems like the nicest person in the world and sometimes she seems like she's from outer space um you know and talks about things you know talk talks seems to be talking about things that you can't see or the or two things that you don't see um i think she probably crashes on somebody's floor uh, people come to her to understand things that they, that really disturb them. Um, uh, nightmares and things like that. Um, and things they can't explain. Um, because she takes everyone serious. She never dismisses anyone or takes their, or, or says that what they're talking about can't exist or isn't possible, isn't possible. Um, she, uh, somebody probably once gave her a knife and said, you need this in case you need to defend yourself. And she dropped it as if it were 
uh, on fire. Uh, she quite conspicuously doesn't carry any weaponry. Um, so if, if nobody knows and she doesn't talk about where she's from, uh, where somebody might, the... somebody, somebody might know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> perfectly uh, uh, fine with somebody knowing she does, um, you know, she doesn't bring it up as a subject of conversation. Um, I guess my question really is, you know, where do people find her? Where does she usually stay? I, uh, I, I, I'd like it if someone found her, like you know, hiding in a in a cupboard somewhere. Oh, okay, but like day to day, where does she oh, live? Where does she yeah. day to day? Where does she live? Well, she crashes on the floor of whoever it is that she's been with last. Uh, she's got no fixed address. Um, she'll stay with somebody for a while if you know they're a good company uh and you know she or she can help them in some way um uh but she's also prone to just kind of wandering off because it's like oh well, somebody needed me and i had to go be with them for a little while i'm sorry i didn't leave you a note okay cool uh thanks Martin. um anyone have any other questions about uh about dusk does anybody look out for dusk since um you know if we assume it's kind of a a, um, a violent place at least sometimes on board the train does anyone take particular care of dusk that's a good question um maybe one of you do uh maybe people are wary of you know, I mean, she probably gets pushed around a good bit. Um, but I would expect that many people on the train are wary of really trying to hurt her because they have no idea what she would do. Uh, brain, you know, she's she has weird brain powers. And uh, so maybe that's the reason that no one has actually you know killed her um or as i said if you know if somebody here has basically said you know hands off dusk that would be a good reason too and that would be very cool okay um sabine how about brain yeah i'm playing and i need to rethink the name it's too close to Brandon, and I get confused when names are too close in sound, so I will probably rename the character, I'll find some other name. Um, anyway, this person has not a name yet, but will have soon, I'll call him. I mean, let's go with Will for, for now, probably we think that. Will is the medic, um, comes across as gruff and a bit scruffy, um, I, I think Will has grown up, obviously, on the trains, trained with someone to fix people. Uh, that's what he does. He, he fixes people if they get hurt or are sick, which happens a lot, sadly, because hygiene and sanitary conditions are not what they should be. And I think he has a bit of a thing about that whole thing. He has a book about it. It's not my gear. Some, uh, but I think that that is uh, something that you would totally have a book about hygiene and sanitation and stuff like that. And dreams of bringing more healthy living conditions to all these people because if living conditions are bad in one part of the train, they will track over, right? People move. So if you got sickness there, eventually everybody gets sick. Like it happened 20 years ago. That was bad. I'm making this up now. If, if anybody minds, uh, please stop me. I love making stuff up. Um, well, the medic has, um, is a field medic, clearly. So I can help if somebody suffers harm. I also have a sixth sense uh, about stuff, which is a 
start of session session move, which I will probably forget about a lot, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it, it'll work out. So I have a sixth sense. Sometimes I'm I'm in places where I actually, you know, how did he know to be there? Uh, anyway, good that he was. Also, um, he has um a refuge, and I think this refuge will be um either near the gardens yeah it's probably near the gardens because in the refuge there is actually a um a place a gar garden of green growing things so it's probably there um the gardens uh and uh, also has some access to some places that other people don't know about which i imagine is probably behind some panels uh, we can kind of creep into the uh, sort of valley of the, in the works. Um, this place that they have, him and his three assistants, is kind of protected by weird booby traps. Like there's one of his assistants who knows about a lot about electric electricity and stuff like that. So don't creep in, please. Uh, if you're not invited, at least. If you're bleeding on the floor, you're invited. Otherwise, Knock. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, as I said, three skilled assistants. One's Chelsea, or a woman takes care of security and electric stuff. Swen, who is a cheerful nurse, and Silence, with a Y, who's good with blood work and likes creepy old tales. And if this thing still existed, she would be a, totally a goth. But since uh, she's nowhere where she could be that, she's a nurse kind of person who handles blood work and likes is interested in blood work what whatever she's good at so or he yeah it's probably she i need to change the picture again i'm sorry uh yeah so i think that's that's him yeah he provides medical care for people obviously okay um and you said he is living in the gardens, right? Or at least that's where that's where his, his the uh, is. Yeah, where his refuge is, uh, where the the the, the whole uh, medic garden is. Okay, cool. Um, any other questions for Sabine about our medic? Okay. Um. Pavel, let's get a get a handle on our monarch then. Uh, the blizzard. So, I mean, I'm very sorry that they also chose the name for starting from B. Uh, well, it's, it's uh, not B, but Brennan and Brennan. Is if if I mumble, sounds sounds too similar. Blizzard yeah. Blizzard is fine. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, Blizzard uh, Blizzard is a monarch. The first impression is that uh, he's very clannish. All of his people have like a very, a very, a very recognizable like a gesture uh, that I have to think about. And he tries to dress as much white as possible in these conditions because he's also because let's talk about his people. So I chose that they have laborers and a little snow cult. Uh, so 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 snow cult think of, thinks of me as a prophet, and then said that a snow cult is like a spokesperson. So I created Mrs. White, who also tries to dress as much white as much possible, because snow is white and everything. You know, snow. It it's going to be weird with the snow. Uh, and my other group are laborers, and I thought that them being fa farming and manual labor, not to have too much cross-reference to the lemma, so that we are just cleaning stuff. I thought, I, I really like the idea about janitors and farmers. And uh, and the person who is a spokesman for this group is a, a pipe. Uh, and uh, I think Monarch is kind of like a leader, fixer, fights for the rights of the, for the working class. Uh, and, uh, and he's making, uh, and he's making art 
as a as a well known uh, snow believer, uh, he's making sculptures from the snow. Uh, so this involves that some people need to get him some snow, and then he needs to like make some sculpture out of it. Uh, and that's and that's his uh, his piece of art. Uh, he he wears this like thick winter cloak that sort of can protect him somehow. In and and and, and definitely did in the in the rebellions and fights that that sometimes happen. And he and and he is seen wearing this like uh, it was described as a handmade Damascus blade. So I envision that. We prob that we that in one of the situations he probably got something made from Damascus steel that was not a blade, and then and then maybe even Lemma or someone less skilled uh, made it into like a a knife. So 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 you have like a knife cut from a bigger piece of Damascus steel, and then with this like handmade like a handle that you can use it as a as a as a as a blade. Uh, but you know, a cool looking blade for a, for a monarch. Uh, yeah, I'm really curious how weird we can how weird we will get with this with this uh, snow cult. And I was thinking where to place Blizzard. I'm thinking either in the gardens itself, but I'm also thinking about maybe the carriage between the the well market. And the gardens. Maybe we are like over there because I'll, because also I do not feel like 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 Blizzard controls any territory. He's like he's like he he's like leader of the people, but he's not like controlling this the the this car. Yes, so he's just like living there and his people are living there. So maybe he has to like deal with whoever rules the garden and deal with whoever. Rules our car. What uh, what kind of a vibe are you looking for in that car that you, the cult lives in? Hmm. Mm. Hmm. I'm trying to think to think night car doesn't really like fit it. Uh you know, I think coming to think of it, I think I will I would place myself in the well market. We probably have to walk to get to the gardens, at least some of my people. Because I really like the idea of this, like cars that are full of people with like the. Uh, I really like the idea of this, like uh, the. Uh, I'm not sure if it was in the movie, but we, but we really know which one I mean with the, from the series, the one, the one where the terrace, the janitor left, the that 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 car, the not the the party car, not the night car. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I mean, the, I remember the noodle stand and then the kind of black market. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So sort of looking, king, 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 like a busy street with like a tiny shop over here. Someone sleeping over there. Uh, just, just few people behind the curtain trying to make a living. Uh, this like. Uh, uh, a lot of people, but someone, but not so bad as a as a tail has it. Okay. And I was thinking to mention one more. I chose to my scavenge. I chose to live as my people do. So uh, I do not, at least yet, put myself above my people. I try to live as them, and endure the same hardship. Okay. Uh... I think everyone has picked the, say, nice sca scavenge uh, option. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. OK. Um, so yeah, let's take a quick break. Um, and then we'll come back for HX. OK. 
So let's find out what um, connects our cast of characters together. Um, Mark, I'm going to pick on you. The, uh, the tyranny of character keeper order is going to be your bane. That's okay, because I just have to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's... Uh, yeah, let's let's ask one question first and then go around perfect um, uh, so uh there are some interesting questions but this the simple one is um do any of you abuse or really neglect your gear does anyone match that no takers what do we envision abusing your gear meaning I mean, not like, taking care of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything that's like, yeah, I mean, um, not cleaning like, it after you stab somebody with it, kind of thing. <laughs> Throw, <laughs> you know, throwing your scepter on the bed instead of putting it in its proper place as a monarch, those kinds of things. Scepter. Uh, uh, unless you have some other space for Blizzard, I think Blizzard can fit this category for him. These are just tools for work. Yeah, and people are important, not the tools. Unless you I have some better spot for me, but I can take it. That's that's perfect. So um, with Blizzard, then it's going to be a minus one. Am I doing this yes. right, Donna? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is thank like you. always in a pockets world. Like, who gets this score every time? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, has there been like a a particular instance or a particular tool that Lama has always got to fix or was especially troublesome or you know just something you remember when you hear Blizzard's name come up yeah that's a good question so um he's uh he's got a cult um i think that he i think that blizzard and his cult have a um have a burner uh, which is to say like a um like a cooktop kind of thing um and they since they're kind of, kind of um thoughtful about helping other people out it's constantly in use um so it's difficult to maintain uh but the cult certainly isn't concerned about pushing it to its limits and beyond so i think that uh lemma ends up having to come over and um make some changes on the cooktop uh, a little bit to keep it going. Does that work? What do you mean by cooktop? Do we like a, like a, melt a, ice? A, like, like a, a stove for cooking? Like right? a stove top for cooking okay. foods. Okay, cool. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I guess I'm like um, saying there are no protein jellies. <laughs> Or whatever they are in this particular snow piercer. Uh, or maybe there are, but it's are. augmented with other food. I mean, my people are farming, so probably some of them are, so probably they are like sneaking some of those like farmed farmed stuff Perfect. to cook it later. So that's awesome. Excellent. Well, you can you can farm cockroaches, I'm sure. You know. <laughs> uh okay. Um so uh, Brandon, how about Dusk? Give a question to put out to the table. Yeah, I have the most loaded questions, of course. Um, so the first, uh, I'll ask the first one, which is, are any of you actually honestly uncomfortable hanging out with me? And this paradoxically gives the history of plus three. I think that... Um... I think that it's a reach for uh for Lemma to understand what's happening mechanically, like chemically, electrically inside Dusk's brain. Um, and since it's something that he can't comprehend, that makes him uncomfortable. That sounds great. You know, 
makes me hugely into you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> checks uh, out. I guess my question, Brandon, that's the is way. Like, that, that's the way the brain picker works. I love like, it. Like what? What has Dusk seen in Lemma that she kind of was able to to hang her understanding of the world on uh, in in a way that makes him uncomfortable? Um. You mean how has she made him uncomfortable? Uh, or like, what insight did she get into him and his world? Um, you know, and and maybe that's connected with the discomfort, or maybe it's I, I think I think she, I mean she picked she picked a, I think uh, I think Mark named it, which is that Lemma has a great deal of discomfort with the immaterial world, right? With things that are not that 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 uh, he cannot get his hands on. Uh, if I understood your comment correctly. Um, and so, uh, and, and so, you know, she's, uh, she's not quite all about that, but she reminds him of that very strongly. And she asks some questions about it. It's like, okay, well, you know, yeah, you, 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 you fix the engine, but did you, uh, did you thank it? <laughs> for what for for everything it's done i think it would appreciate it <laughs> that's cool uh okay um bear with me a second i'm gonna open the door the dog is hunting it don't you have to show us the dog if you let the dog in Everyone else has gone to bed, obviously. So it's like I want, I want into your little room. Here. It's a rule. Any <laughs> any animals that are you gotta that show are us the animal, named, uh, Any animals that are named have to be displayed. I have not yet the named the animal. No, I mean, mean <laughs> cited cited during a role playing session. Uh, he is out of reach, uh, but you will hear him howl. I'm sure at some point in time. Awesome. Um, we'll see. If, if he if he deigns to approach me, I'll lift him up for for a gander. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, Sabine, how about uh, a question for a medic? I did that his name is Scrape. Um, yeah, um, a question. I think um, I will start at the top. Do I figure you're doomed to self destruction? I think that's Blizzard. Come on. Snow cult. You freeze to you, you know you freeze to death. I'm of not I'm, I'm not suing on your frozen toes again. I'm Perfect. not. Mm -mm. So so is it that simple? You've had to save or not being able to save so many people. So many of Blizzard's people? I think cult, right? I mean, come on. There are bacteria in some of the snow that you're dragging into this here. Just, you know, and the ice can and freeze. Damn it. Yeah, and also, I, I think you're going to freeze your significant parts off if you continue going on like that. It's not that I don't like you, but, <laughs> I mean, have some mm -hmm. respect for your, your, yourself, right? It makes yeah. sense, right? They're doomed. Yeah, well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, but you you don't turn them away, right? You you help them. No, I mean they pay, right? Okay. I I I um. I wouldn't probably chase away somebody if they couldn't pay, but I like to be paid. I I don't want to. I I need soap, right? You need a lot of soap when I'm fine work. And if it smells nice, well, it's bonus, right? There's no sweet smelling soap. Well. Okay. Um, Blizzard, let's get a question of yours out there. 
Let's start with the big one. Are any of you my people? <laughs> don't you, you don't feel the need to 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 volunteer? Just like you know, posing the open question. Is I, I'm seeing zero takers for mem membership of the snow cult. <laughs> it's really interesting, but I think that I uh, I think Lum is kind of like um, separate from that. I wonder maybe Lemma was previously one of your people. That might be interesting. Ooh. Why did well, what happened when Lemma left and was it okay? Ooh, maybe so. Maybe they maybe they fall into the you wish you were my people, right? Lemma uh, God. wanted what to be part of the group again. Well, we were have, all blizzards. People? I also have laborers, so you know there is a, a little thing for everyone. There's comfort for the mind and hard work for the others. Uh, but um, I see no takers. Yes. So, so when... can I can I ask a question? Maybe depending on Lemma's answer, uh, did you did you leave Blizzard's cult in this big display? Like, have you ever stood up to Blizzard for real in front of the rest of his people? I can't think of a reason at this point that Lemma would have kind of stood up to Blizzard because Blizzard seems. <laughs> But this is, it seems like a pretty um uh god what's the word I'm looking for uh you know a pretty positive presence based on what I've heard about Blizzard I like Blizzard I think that maybe um the stood up to sounds like dusk actually interesting. Oh, yeah. well, at what occasion? Um, uh, you, I don't know. What were you doing? You were, um, you were moving into a certain area, and I said, "If you do this, you'll be sorry," and I wouldn't leave. Uh, and you know. Probably even some of your people grabbed me and said, let's just shove her out of the way. And I looked at you and I got, and I went, you can hurt me if you want, but you'll still be really sorry. And that weirded out enough people that you didn't do it. You can decide whatever there is. Hey. Uh... Where where do you think that was, Blizzard? What what or where was uh, dusk blocking? Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, I think Blizzard. Uh, I think uh, I think dusk blocked me. Probably there is like a a door somewhere in one of those cars that we can open. And that's a way how we like get the actual snow, and uh, and and that's blocked me from like getting getting the snow we needed for our rituals or or one of my sculptures. Uh, so yeah, the, it it really pissed me off. Okay. Um, so back around, Mark or Lemma. Uh, the question, the other big question I think here is which of you seems to me like the biggest potential problem? Um, I don't want to choose Blizzard again uh, because I've already chosen Blizzard. So Scrape or Dusk? And I mean, Brandon? Feel free. <laughs> I, I think it's a like... pretty. I think it's pretty obvious choice here. Yeah. Unless, unless I mean, uh, that's what uh, I feel comes, like. And I think you know some reason why she'd be a huge problem. One of the reasons is that. Um, one of the reasons is that sometimes uh, Lama feels like Dusk is going to be too weird around the wrong person. That's, who, I think. Who... I think just hearing people talk. About in what they're doing i think dusk has caused problems i mean has yeah. you know has stirred up uh you know shit 
um, you know, in some of the, the social groups, uh, uh, which has made some people afraid of her and some people just resent her. Um, you know, she's like, you know, because with a brain picker around, you never know what's secret, right? Mm -hmm. Or at least that's what people think, you know? It's like, you know, they think brain pickers can, you know, just read your thoughts. Uh, and therefore, the, you know, nothing is secret. And so, and, and so people are, they react badly on things, circumstances like that. Sounds good. Okay. So that's like a, just a general, that girl is going to cause some yeah. trouble someday and I don't know what Something it is, is and there's no specific right. trigger. It's just like, I've got a bad feeling about this. Yep. Okay. Uh, Brandon, do you want to ask a second question for Dusk? Sure. Um, my next big question is, do any of you seem dangerous and unpredictable to me? And given our past history, that well could be Blizzard. Uh, dangerous but, uh, and unpredictable. Uh... But I'm I think, happy I think, the, being scraped or no one at all. I think in a way, although I'm not sure. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I can take I can take it. I mean, my people already tried to to remove you by force. But uh, we didn't. But it didn't go into like you know physical stabbing and punching. But you, who, know, who knows what will happen next time? Well, you know, you know. Well, you knew at the time you could have had me removed by force. Um, I'm not. You know, your people are perfectly capable of manhandling me. Uh, you just decided that that wasn't what you wanted to do. Change your mind. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess those two pieces of history kind of dovetail pretty, pretty nicely together. So I'm not sure there's Think so. much more to ask there. Um, Sabine, do you want to ask a second question? Yeah, I want to ask a second question. I have so many left. Um, and I think. Uh, have you put a hand in when it mattered and helped me save lives? And I would like to throw that at dusk, actually, because I have a feeling that she might actually, weirdness aside, might be willing to, to help if it counts, right? I think, I think dusk is, is willing to act as your nurse, you know, to like, she's, she's very sweet. You could even put the plus three one in there if you want. No, uh, the plus three one is uh, for another, have you been beside me all along and has seen everything I, I've seen. I think that that's different from, have you helped me with, uh, with my Absolutely. job and that, stuff that, like that? Because I think that's, that's what I would like to have had with Dusk. This, this kind of um, idea that she is actually someone who will be there and, and help even if it's not. Fair enough. And yeah, she absolutely does. I imagine okay. if it if this works with you, um, you know, you've bandaged up someone or something like that, and she holds their hand and talks to them and calms them down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because and she's very good at that. Uh -huh. um, she's really she's really sweet when she's not being straight. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Maybe there was some sort of catastrophe, some ice breaking through a roof and people being actually injured and we had to do a lot of stuff and you were there and that mattered and I, since then I'm like okay when she's weird okay yeah but she she helps when she's when, when it really comes down to it you can rely on her okay sounds sounds good 
so I guess there has, was a cave-in recently or something like that, some big accident. Um, good to know. Uh, okay, and uh, Pat, will you have a second question for Blizzard? Yes, however, I'm afraid there will be no takers for it as well. So let me emphasize a little bit about the snow cult. And, I, and it might step in on what Dusk said about Dusk. Because what actually the snow cult does give is comfort. So I actually think that my snow cult is actually religious, weird religion that tries to make people comfortable with the like with the like conditions with the snow being cleansing and giving and giving people hope that that after the great snow there will be place for those believers to like live so i think it actually allows people to like and situation in past situation in in, in in those people who died from the snow maybe finding hope uh however no i don't know things might escalate quite quickly in a weird direction but i think that's that's so it's not like turbo weird evil call that cuts people in pieces i mean i think that's i need to give it some slightly better thing because it does give comfort so i think uh so having said that and of course i i, I also have laborers from whom i'm like their uh how do you call it when what do worker association for whom like i'm the worker association union. for the laborers union. worker union yes so having explained that do any of you wish you were my people like a case for that actually because sometimes it's like oh i have to do everything by myself like all that pressure sometimes i wish i had a guy who just come and say hey the snow still keep still falling we trust in the snow and look at the beautiful ice statue that i made and also here's a radish um so i i kind of i kind of like while i think this is going to go horribly wrong for you i wish i wish it wouldn't I really wish it wouldn't. I really wish it was actually as simple and lovely and nice as you think it might be. Does that work for you? Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so. Um, Mark, I think you got a... So you have like two options now. You could either go for everyone else, or if you have a third question that does fit, you can uh, you can ask. Yeah. I'd, so um, I will just if anybody wants to take this, I go out. I go. I go out into dangerous territory to salvage. Who usually comes with me? Um, and I don't know necessarily that anyone would want to volunteer for that. But if you do, you can. And otherwise. Um, I would come with you. Yeah, sure. Dangerous territory. Sounds like you need someone to um, patch you up after you've oh, hell contracted yeah. blood poisoning by <laughs> scraping your hands or something like that. Thank you. Thank you, Sabine. Awesome. Sure, sure thing. What's the uh, the most dangerous place you've been to to, uh, to scavenge something? So, uh, assuming that we're... Um, I think that it's the well market. I mean, well, gosh, no, that doesn't quite make sense. The most dangerous place maybe is going to be a, a yet on a, on a sign the train or off train yeah. or something. Or maybe it was just during um, the kind of catastrophe cave in thing that we had when you yeah. went there somewhere to to fix it actually to fix something to fix a break or something and i was like okay i'm here anyway just seems to be doing a good job here i'm coming with you and i'm making sure you come back in one piece that's that's perfect i love that donna is that good for you yeah yeah awesome mm -hmm. thank you do you think uh, do you think this cave in is how the shatters became like a broken carriage or is totally? This yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Okay. 
cool. Uh, Brandon, I don't think you have a third question, so it's I don't. everyone else. So it's uh, everyone else. Yeah. Plus one. Weird I have insights weird insights to everyone. To everyone. <laughs> um, Can I ask what weird insight you have about me? Yeah. Since, since we're... Since Ooh, let's see. That's what it says. Well, you're a healer. You help people. You patch people up. Is it possible that there is some person or group that you would seriously like to hurt? That is definitely possible that there is some group that I actually resent and uh, maybe do a shoddy job or something like that. I think it's not Blizzard's cult because, and not his laborers either. Um, maybe the tall gang guys or maybe what remained of the train conductors, or the, the, maybe there's some kind of uh, these these people who used to control tickets, right? Mm -hmm. And they're they're still stuck up it's because they 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 used to belong to the power structure. Maybe they still do. Do you have a temper? I don't have a temper. No, hey, mm, throws a thing. I don't have a temper at all. Yes. I have a really? very sweet temper. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, how does that uh, sound, Brandon? Sounds great. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, Sabine, I think you do have a third question you've been hoarding till now. Yes. Uh, I think it's, uh, have you been beside me all along? I've seen everything I've seen, and that's probably Lemma, because I need Lemma to fix my machines. Simple as that. I mean, Chelsea can do some of the stuff, but for the more advanced thingies, I need him. I need him. Love that. Yeah. And that's why I go out with him into dangerous territory, not because I have a good heart or anything like that. You're, you're secretly a terrible person. Everyone knows this. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm really hard hearted and I care only about gold. No. Oh. Oh, I'm not kidding. Uh, do you think um, so? Your your relationship with Lemma has got to go back before the cave in, right? Yeah, yeah. Relatively yeah. recently. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you're thinking something, Mark. I can see it. <laughs> I'm not. It's empty in here. One hundred percent. Okay. Okay, well, maybe maybe think about like how far back this relationship goes, you know, like maybe when you first met or that that kind of moment of understanding where uh, you were in this together, yeah. despite right. the very different way you, you look at things. Um, there'll be a flashback for sure. Uh, okay, and uh, Pavel for Blizzard, I guess you got the everyone else option. Yes, unfortunately, Lemma fell into everyone else. You like people, you see them clearly. I mean, what, what do you see about Lemma? Uh, Lemma is a, is a good person, hardworking. Maybe maybe I should offer offer him to to join uh, my laboring force. Uh, they are fixing stuff around here. They are good. For, they are good people. Is that a plus? Um, is that a plus one? Uh, um, yes, that one. Okay. Uh, yes, I couldn't. I'm, I'm I'm a people person. You are a people person. Yeah, it's pluses across the board. Awesome. Whereas, you know, Lama is like, those guys are weird. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think that is that. Uh, a I lot of a lot of drama. Was, Sorry, go ahead. I wanted, Pavel. I wanted to suggest because I was thinking about this about this car between the market and the gardens. And I have some ideas I just wanted to, to throw it out. Uh, because you said that some caving happens in shutters. Mm -hmm. 
so the so I so so like I'm uh, so I envision that it was like broken in and now get get in the shutters. Yes. Oh yes, that's perfect. I think that's so, what you said per, uh, earlier. Yes. Sorry. So, so the shatter is 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 a specific location, right? So it's a broken um, carriage, which is where the cave in started. I. What do you mean by cave in in a train? Cave in is like when you have the a roof cave in means and, so the, the roof can, can collapse, down. right? I, I think that was an actual cave in. We traveled to, through a cave, a tunnel, and the, the, something something fell, something kind of collapsed. And that damaged the train. Damaged we, the we kept, top of the train there. Yeah, we kept going, but uh, damaged. It was damaged. And, and snow got in. So you have a, a part of a train. In. You have the part of a train that's exposed to the outside. Yeah. Okay. Temperature and, the, and okay. it's, it's and got it got snow. It's got mm. snow drifts in it and things like that. And people. Okay. And this is in shutters. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, because I because I, I don't want to like make it like too close to it. So I thought about the part between market and the gardens to be like either the part which has like broken broken heating, but then I'm not sure if you want to make it like a better better part. I was thinking about maybe this is like a part where the word where stuff used to be kept. But after so many years, it's like uh, the stuff was used, and now they are like big empty spaces were slightly dangerous because nobody really lives there, and various things can happen. But I'm not sure, and and and, and also because of that, they are not like heated, so they are like perfect place for like a temple of the snow, an example. But I'm not sure if it if it's not too similar to shutters still. I think it's it's fine. The, it could be that the heating is broken in that wagon has been for decades. Like, and people also said, okay, we put stuff in there that needs to freeze. Um, or it's and, like a junkyard or... Yeah. 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 That works great, I think. Yeah. And yeah. nobody oh. can live there permanently because there is no heating. Because it's too cold. Yeah, because yeah, it's... And there's like a, there's like a snow... Air, one area that's basically a snow bank. Oh, you know where where, that... where snow has gotten in, and and it's and it's a physically dangerous place to spend too much time in because, you know, uh, uh, also because it most I guess most of it's dark and there's probably like junk like if there's it's like a junkyard, you know, there's sharp rusty things there and yeah probably the the lights do not work all and it's cold. And I totally envision the thing that before you, and it doesn't have to be like one car, it can be like a couple of cars, maybe like four or five, so that we have like, like train parts. And I totally envision that there is like a communal cloaks that you put on before you get in. And then when you get on the other side, like put the clothes, put the warming cloak on the, on the, on the hang. I, I imagine that there's like a tunnel uh, going through it of scaffolding with like uh, lights, you know, occasional light strung from the ceiling on a on a makeshift cable that somebody has put through there so that or or maybe people just have to carry a light source with them yeah perfect and this thing with the criminal cloaks for people passing left and right so that they can move yeah awesome <coughs> we're gonna call yeah. it the cloak room yeah uh and no one could, the no one, and no, one, one chant. no one could possibly live there no but that's right it beggars it beggars the imagination that anyone would be desperate enough to live in there okay uh awesome so <clears throat> we are on the dot i think we have done all of our we've ticked all the boxes uh so i will stop the recording and we do a brief debrief <laughs>